Okay, uh, I think we can start the lesson. So in the last class, what we were talking was, we were discussing about what? Stomatal opening and closing, if you remember, right? So what we said is, uh, since we have already talked about transpiration, we have talked about the uh, structure through which transpiration occurs, it is always true. What happened? Yeah, you, you, what happened? Okay, so uh, 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 since we have talked about transpiration, transpiration ki hoi thuriya hoi, obviously is tomata and we have talked about the different types of tomata, the classification of tomata and if you are talking about tomata, one common line that we speak about is it generally opens during the daytime and it uh, closes during the night time. So we have discussed the opening and closing mechanism of this tomata. Uh, speaking about transpiration, it is not only stomatal transpiration that is present, but it is not only stomatal transpiration that is present, but it is transpiration that is present. Aru ki ki transpiration asile. Thus, transpiration occurs only through the stomata, or there are other means of transpiration also. If you all can't answer this basic question, ki porisa gharote ko porha nae no? Tumar ke last class asila? Class Corisilla and I video lecture size. Tomorrow? Yeah, you. Class Corisilla? Kyo, Monogole. Hm? But class nine or think as a fine lecture size. No, sit down, sit down, please sit down. Have you gone through the lectures? Yes, you have gone through. So last class what we have discussed? Stomatal opening. You have it in your notes or not? You have it in your notes or you don't have it? You don't have it? You have it or you don't have it? Huh? Huh? You remove your mask, I cannot hear. You don't have it? Why? You were there in the class last? No, I not. You did not come? <sighs> okay, let's not. Uh, so, there is no time also no, to ask individually now. Already the time is like approaching. So, we have to finish a lot of course. So, there is no point of me individually pointing out as to who has written the notes, who has understood or not. It's your duty to come and ask me the questions anyway. Uh, so, we were talking about transpiration and what we know that apart from stomatal transpiration, we have something called as lenticular, <coughs> cuticular and bark transpiration also. Talking about lenticular and cuticular, we do not have any opening and closing mechanism and so that is the type of transpiration that occurs throughout the day and the night. But if you are talking about stomatal transpiration, what we remember, that there is an opening or closing mechanism. Opening closing mechanism, we know that the stomata opens during the daytime. No? And in the last class, what we were discussing was, we were talking something about the stomatal opening and closing. There should be certain factors that operate in a plant so that the stomata opens. Our kisuman inuka conditions hobo lake jakarni stomata to close ho zai, right? And regarding this hypothesis, regarding the theory that we proposed to explain the stomatal movement, uh, what we said is we have to talk about two of them. One is sugar starch hypothesis and the other is the role of proton or the role of potassium ion in stomatal opening. In the last class, we have started with sugar starch hypothesis. I think we have discussed about what are the factors that occur during the daytime and what are the conditions that occur during the night time. The not kiba kibi condition of carne is tomato to ki kore, open kore. Who is responsible? Obviously, the guard cell is responsible. And if you are talking about the closing of this tomato, also the features occurring in the guard cell again is responsible for the closing of this tomato. We have talked about something called as osmotic pressure, water potential, etc. etc. Right. So, we will be continuing with sugar starch hypothesis itself. If you remember what we said is this is not a theory but it is a hypothesis right. So, whenever we talk about it as a hypothesis it does not have proper facts to support it right. So, hypothesis will equal to proper facts nai we have certain drawbacks why this hypothesis was not accepted right. So, out of the two things that we are going to study that is the role of proton and sugar starch hypothesis it is the role of proton that is accepted and it is the most widely accepted 
related uh, uh, fact that talks about stomatal opening. The sugar starch hypothesis to kiho karne except no kore, obviously because it has certain drawbacks. So we'll be talking about the drawbacks today. Heading koreba uh, drawbacks of sugar starch hypothesis. Because of these drawbacks, this hypothesis was not accepted. What does the drawback talk about? For instance, it itself is a very slow process. Stomatal movement is a fast process. The interconversion is a slow process, so it could not explain. When we are talking about the word called as stomatal movement, what we understand, we are talking about the opening and closing. Right? Opening and closing of the stomata is faster as compared to the interconversion. And what interconversion we are talking about? We have already seen, no? Glucose gets converted to starch and starch gets converted to glucose, no? Glucose starch will like convert during the night time. Starch gets converted to glucose during the daytime. So we have written the reactions, what happens during the daytime time and what happens during the night time right so first being it a slow process it could not explain second 
sun does not occur in onion plant but stomatal movement occurs the entire hypothesis revolves around two words sugar and starch so if you are talking about the guard cell no at a guard cell the microscope or all swa then either sugar should have been present or starch should have been present if you are talking about the guard cell during the day condition they tell microscope or all guard cell to sale i mean key present probably is sugar and if you are talking about that guard cell during the night time if you see it under the microscope then there should be starch right so but this is a point that does not support the hypothesis starch does not occur in the onion plant but in spite of that stomatal movement continues Opening and closing hoi thake. What does the hypothesis say? Jedi opening and closing hoi boi lagge tella sugar hoi boi boi starch hoi boi boi starch convert hoi boi boi sugar convert hoi boi 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 So guard cell ho thai gita boshtu thakhi boi lagi boi. Kito we have seen absent in certain plants but in those plants also opening and closing of the stomata takes place. So you cannot say it is only sugar and starch which is responsible for opening and closing of the stomata. Yeah. Starch ke tiya hobo? Night time hot. So night time hot, tumi jete guard cell to saba. Jete lag guard cell hot starch components thaki bola ke na lagye. Thaki bola ke. Kintu yate ami ki dekhi sir starch night. Huh? Hey, tumi lajano. We have talked about the onion plant. We have seen that onion hot to anyo tumi hey na thay. Glucose ke ona thaki. But obviously food to thaki boi. Kintu not necessary in the form of starch. Right. Next is. Again, this was our explanation about starch and this is the explanation about sugar. Again, sugar was never found in free state in the guard cell of open stomata. What we have seen is in the daytime, ki hoi zai? Starch get converted to glucose and phosphate. Right? If you remember, I mean last class on likhi silo, starch ki hoi convert to silo, glucose aru phosphate or glucose ki hoi, nothing but sugar. So if you observe the guard cell or if you observe the guard cell under the microscope during the daytime, te te hale hey guard cell to sugar thakki bo lagi silo na lagi silo. Because starch converted into what? Glucose and phosphate. But sugar was never found in the guard cell of any plant. Right? So sugar formed by glucose formed ekupuana sile. So again, this is a drawback of this. And lastly, we have a point that extra effectiveness of blue light. Means blue light have a major role in the stomatal opening. Blue light to jedi pore, stomata to kunkale open kore. We don't have to talk about these details. But these being a part of the drawbacks, what we can conclude is this hypothesis is not accepted to explain the stomatal movement right tar bitor ta first second and third e gita saba ki hokane no hoy slow process second ki suman plants of starch nai aru third ki guard cell of sugar nai clear so since these were the drawbacks obviously it was not accepted so we have to move to the next one next likha proton concept theory or Role of potassium ion in stomatal opening.
So according to Levitt, what did he say? He said that a particular ion was responsible for opening and closing of this tumasa. It is not the interconversion that is responsible, but there is a role of a particular ion and which ion we are talking about? It's potassium ion, right? What is the main concept of this theory is when potassium ion enter inside the guard cell, the stomata opens and whenever the potassium ion goes back from the guard cell to the point of origin, then the stomata closes. So the theory to it at a main point, right? So now we'll be talking about say, what happens during the daytime so that potassium ion enters inside the guard cell. Kibata karono karne to humabo no. A ratio kibata hopole gibo jar karne potassium ion from the guard cell will move away, right? So the first line if potassium ion enters inside the guard cell, the stomata will open. Stomata will open maniki. Obviously, the solute concentration will increase the osmotic pressure and water potential and DPD we have already talked about. So, ultimately, ki koribo, it will lead to the taking in or endo osmosis of water and it will make the cell target. As a result, ki hobo, stomata, the pore will open and then transpiration will take place. Are exactly the opposite during the night? Night or jitya potassium ion gusi zabo. again that solute concentration will decrease, water potential will increase, etc. etc. Is this over? Yar Pitorot key questions are here. Questions are here proposed by next is which ion is responsible? Potassium ion. Third question potassium ion guard cell out humale. It opens and it closes. If it enters, it opens. So these are the three points that you have to study. Stomata eta jetia open hobo. Stomata boli koli it has a pore, right? Stomata is a st structure. A structure has a proper uh, collection of cells, no? So if you are talking about the stomata, it has a pore. It has guard cells. Our tar surrounding cells bila ko kami ki boli ko subsidiary cells boli ko, no? Normally, a pore to through a ki hoy transpiration no hoy dalo. So a pore to jetia lake open no hoy jetia lake to transpiration no hobo. So open hobo kitia. Jitia A cell to a kilobo water lobo. Water lobo plays it a target with any case, no? Epineta cell as a epineta cell as a duita cell a panilo as a panilo lehi enlarge with a bona. So if this enlarges and this enlarges, ultimately this will lead to the opening of the pore and then the stomata will open, right? Etia kota to hold guard cell a pani ketia lobo. Obviously, jetia tar salutes visi takibo, right? Next, click huh? <coughs> Okay, before writing about what happens during the night time and what happens during the daytime, we have been discussing up till now this tomato opening corribolagile at a ion is responsible that is called as potassium ion. But if you uh, see here, we have written something called as a hormone also, right? So this theory talks about opening and closing, opening or kune help for a potassium ion, closing or kune help for at a hormone. And whenever we talk about a hormone that has a negative role, which hormone do we remember? Do we mask on my It's nothing. So, it has to be correct, not necessary. At least you are trying, no? It might be correct also. No one is going to judge. All the judgment will come in the entrance. All the judgment will come in the entrance. Class of eco matter in the no? At least don't stay mum in the class. Okay, anyway. So, uh, what I was saying is, hormones fully call a plant hormone or phytohormone is a word that you all have already heard, right? Phytohormones ki ki asle, auxin, jubilin, cytokinin, right? Ethylene and abscisic acid. And whenever we talk about a negative hormone, it's abscisic acid. So, which hormone is responsible? Obviously, abscisic acid. So, potassium ion ki koribo, opening on help koribo, abscisic acid ki koribo, closing on help koribo, right?
So during the daytime, what happens? The first line that everyone know about it, starch disappears. Starch ketia form kore? Glucose gets converted to starch and starch remains in the cell during the night time. It is during the daytime that the starch gets converted to simple sugar, right? So, during the daytime, obviously, starch content of guard cell disappears. So, starch gets converted into something. Kihole convert kore, we have shown this, right? Phosphoenol, tapsor oxaloacetic acid, tapsor malic acid. Malic acid gets divided or it breaks down into ions, right? Positive ions or negative ions form kore. At this time, what happens is exchange takes place, right? And if you are talking about exchange, no, I mean already at a boost to it. So positive always gets attracted or exchanged with positive ions, and negative always get exchanged with negative ions. So yate ki hobo malic acid to bhangi palay ions alo zite bhangi gol H positive to ki holo kot exchange hoye sabo K positive holo kot exchange hoye sabo. Ita K positive to kot asile. A good reactions can be a good reactions can be obviously in the guard cell because starch was present in the guard cell itself, right? So, if you are talking about this as the guard cell, no, starch, okay, we have this uh, subsidiary cells also, no? So, uh, at this uh, in, in the guard cell, KS less starch, now what we see is H positive or melatonin. Right, starch to to convert ho goli alake. Itia ki hobo se H positive will get convert. I mean, exchange with K positive. Itia positive ion eta aru eta positive ion alo ke convert koi bolibo. K positive to core pralo bo subsidiary cell or pralo bo. Right, subsidiary cell or pra K positive to ahi bo H positive to yale gusi ahi bo. Now the point is K positive to subsidiary cells hole ahi le ke neke. If you are talking about a stomata, stomata is obviously an epidermal tissue system or a part, no? If you are talking about a guard cell, guard cell is nothing but an epidermal cell. If you are talking about a subsidiary cell, subsidiary cell can you cell hoy? Epidermal hoy no hoy. Guard cell ki hoy? Epidermal in origin? Ne beleg. The question is, guard cell is an example of dash tissue system ki kuba? Epidermal tissue system. The subsidiary cell is an example of what? Epidermal itself because the entire structure is in the epidermis itself, right? So ultimately, A to come keep it going. Epidermal, right? Epidermal cell. So the question is the first point that we have understood is there will be an exchange. What will get exchange? H positive will get exchange with K positive. H positive originally cell in the guard cell, K positive cell in the epidermal cell. So from the epidermal cell, what will happen? It will enter inside the guard cell. The point is K positive to epidermal cell or can it ahile? Exchange of polagile to that thaki polagibo no. So that can it ahile. When we talk about potassium ion, generally obviously all the ions are absorbed from the soil and along with water it reaches each and every cell. So Water root absorb kuriya se root se absorb kora pani ilo kote potassium ions hua hisse potassium ions kora hisse ultimately in the subsidiary cells and at that time they got exchanged. Is the point clear? Okay. So after this, likhi ba.
So instead of H positive, K positive entered inside the guard cell. Now, uh, from one point of view, uh, we do not have a proper explanation as to why did the solute concentration increased. Karon H positive ulai go se tar replacement is ape K positive ahi se. That to solute to increase kori dia nai, increase kori se niki. Cellot ki asile H positive, he ulai go, tak replace kune kori le K positive. So solute concentration to a K ase, right? So that could, this theory could not explain how. Uh, or it could not give a proper explanation as to how did the solute content increased. They said that the solute content increased without a proper explanation. So what is the explanation they have given? We have written that part only, right? Okay. Okay, ATR, we are not sure about it. Current H positive got replaced by K positive. Anyone who is K positive homologue solute concentration to bahi goal, but can ke bahi goal eko explanation neither karne, right? But the only thing that you need to remember, so from MCQ point of view, obviously these steps are not important. What is important is question ki ahibo, what is the role of K positive? K positive into the guard cells, tomato opens, K positive away from the guard cells, tomato closes. Right. So this happens during the light. Hmm. Hmm. But he said. No, H positive or K positive. Agote guard cell or H positive na sil zano. Asile. So H positive to replace he kori sa K positive er. Belag eta solute humaya ha na. Ba bohot belag belag dhono solute to humaya ha na. Eta bos to replace kori sa anatai. To tate solute concentration to kene ke increase kori le. To my chili solute eta asile. Solute we could have agreed that the solute concentration has increased. But it was just a replacement of an iron. Guard cell or stomatal guard cell to stomatai hoy. Guard cell to plus tomato line as I know, tomato to a at a part whole guard cell. Guard cell of plus tomato key, guard cell itself is a tomato. Guard cell of a pore through a pore is just a pathway through which the water will transpire. Right? Okay, in the last class, we have talked about the role of pH in opening and closing of the stomata. Anyone remember about it? pH or stomatal opening or key relation? If pH Increases, stomata opens, the stomata closes. If pH decreases, stomata opens, the stomata closes. What is the relation? pH has to decrease, then only the stomata will open. Right? Hey, point two important. Jeneke mo kolu no? Potassium ion leads to the opening of the stomata. One point that we have already read is about the role of pH in the stomatal opening. pH is the it has stomata to ki hobo. It will close.
So, who is responsible for closing of the stomata? Stomata kitia close koriba jete exchange to stop hobo. When will the exchange be stopped? When a hormone gets activated. Which hormone we are talking about? Abscessic acid. Abscessic acid activate kitia hobo at low pH. A low pH kitia hobo obviously during the dark. And ABA is also called as water stress hormone. A boost to monotrachida. Any of my hormones or details we'll be talking about in plant growth and regulators and development chapter 2, we'll talk in details. So, this is all about stomatal opening and closing, and we are almost at the end of the chapter. <coughs> so, starting uh, uh, from the first class, what we have talked about is we have talked about the concept of transport and the different types of transport that we see in case of a plant, right. So, <laughs> Abscessic acid जरी ना था के abscessic acid जरी to ना करे तो exchange to exchange to If the stomata has to get closed, abscessic acid has to get activated, right? So this is all. No doubt the notes look a little bit longer, but the points that we have to read is very less. No stomatal opening or it's just few points that we need to talk about. Next week, huh? Can you find it? Next week, huh? factors affecting rate of transpiration. Because if you have a lot of water, you will activate it. You will have to use hormones. Next week, huh? 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 Next week, the hori pori pole kun baata hormone responsible hoy na hoy. Hold na. Abscess ek aise de ki kam kore. It do the function of abscission. What is abscission? To cut off, right? If a leaf has to fall off from the plant, if a fruit has to fall off from a plant, no. Adult plant or fruit ata hoy se. It's not that. What we see, it is the ripened fruit that only falls off. Right. It's not necessary that the human being should go and pluck the fruit from the plant, right? He do naturally porizabo, right? So naturally ketia poribo when it gets ripened. So after the fruit gets ripened, ripening hormone to belega se. Fruit ripening hormone ki it highly no. So ripening process to hogol. After ripening what? It has to fall down. So some hormone needs to work so that it helps the fruit to fall down. Falling of the fruit away from the plant is called as abscission, cut off, right? Hey, cut off the hori se pori le, leaf eta se hori pore. Ki ho karne? It's all because of abscessic acid. Abscessic acid ki kore? It creates a zone of abscission. At a layer of cells form kore. Hey, cells to kami ki bili kon? Zone of abscission. Ar hey, zone of abscission le eku khana ba eku pani eku na jai. 
as a result the sales will die and ultimately everything will fall off oh that is a reason abscission zone hobo like about it have abscission hobo are abscission zone who is responsible abscisic acid right So we'll be talking about factors affecting stomatal opening and closing. First is light. It was not key liquid to so be jane. Okay, so if you are talking about uh, stomatal opening and closing and the relation to it with light, light and stomatal opening or relation key, so when light falls, stomata opens, right? So this is the first line that we understood. Next line we have to talk about succulent xerophytes. Succulent xerophytes are what is the Because they have a special stomata. What was the special stomata? Scotoactive. Right? So if you are talking about the different wavelengths of light, Kuntu wavelength delay basically khulibo, it is always the blue light, right? And that was something that could not be explained by sugar starch hypothesis. If you think about that last drawback that we have written, Stomata opening and closing. Stomata to ketia open kurbo, chita light puribo. Light puli kole, we generally talk about the visible light. When we talk about the visible light, it's made up of different wavelengths, right? But we know that we can break the light. No? Different, different wavelengths, we break kurbo parno. Our experimentally keep the kisus, if you expose a stomata to blue light, it opens faster.
for in terms of stomatal opening okay have you heard a word called as antagonistic opposite right so in terms of stomatal hormone do, uh, sorry in terms of stomatal opening duta hormone that acts antagonistically understood kun duta cytokinin or abscisic acid cytokinin e ki kore influx help kore abscisic acid e ki koy efflux kore we have read about those two terms no influx mane ki entry of k positive into the guard cell and if you are talking about efflux away or, or coming out of k positive from the guard cell so etai ki kore humabole help kore etai ulabole help kore so both of them x ki opposite and so we use a word called as antagonistic right both of them work antagonistically as far as to mattel opening is concerned
Hormone to get a synthesized course of hormone to do to occur at a factor it is responsible. No, no, there are so many factors that collectively work. It is not only hormone, kindu, you have to say the role of potassium ions also. JD occur hormones a whole head and a levitated hormone or high goal head, right? It is primarily that potassium ion, right? That kind of solute concentration to bahe. Hormone synthesized, hai. hormone synthesized work and exchange hai. solute concentration by a kind of stomata open core. Okay, now out of all the factors that we have written, no stomatal opening and closing or kiki factor or kiki role, no, we have talked about light, water, carbon dioxide, etc. Out of all the factors, maximum question has been asked about atmospheric humidity, right? So we will be talking about role of atmospheric humidity in opening of the stomata and role of atmospheric humidity in transpiration. Duta mustu ase, no? Transpiration is stomata opening and closing, we know both the things. If you are talking about transpiration, transpiration is through obviously through the stomata. So if the stomata remains open, it is transpiration. But what we have written? Is the point understood? So maximum question has been asked about this point itself. So high humid condition or Transpiration hobone no hoy, no hoy. Can water vapor no? It will not get vaporized. But stomata kula thaki bo na thake. Stomata kula thaki bo, right? In fact, we have written what? It will be more widened, right? <coughs> Sorry. Next point liquor factors affecting the rate of transpiration.
rate of transpiration is faster in blue light than red light. Why? Can blue light poile stomata bisike khun kale khule and widen hoy thake, right? So if you are talking about stomata uh, opening, uh, effective kun to light, most effective kun to light, it's always the blue light, right? So if the stomata opens, then obviously transpiration will be more.
That's one. Important. Is it a hole again? So some of the internal factors on which the rate of transpiration depends upon, right? Leaf area, I think nothing to explain. Jiman rangon hopo, jiman sumata besi hopo, jiman transpiration besi hopo, age of a leaf understood. Some of the anatomical features that are seen to check the rate of transpiration. Bully form cells hopo, question I have, bully form cells are found in generally question to I have grass on hopo. That ki hoi folding and unfolding of leaves. So, 
So, we have talked about the factors affecting transpiration and factors affecting the rate of stomatal movement. Right? Apart from this, I make some terms. Jani bolayibo, ekini sabo layibo. What's the time? Uh, so, what we are left with is certain terms and plus, since we are talking about transport, no maximum in the entire lesson, we have talked about transport of what? Transport of water, right? We know whenever we talk about transport, either we are talking about the xylem or we are talking about the phloem, right? Etyalake jiman discussion hole, we are talking about the xylem transport, but we have to talk something about the phloem transport also. Right. So, phloem transporter basically na lage, xylem part to basically phloem transporter. If you remember, uh, have you heard something called as a gardening experiment? Gardening experiment, experiment. You take a plant, you remove certain cells of the plant, and then you see if the phloem is remo removed, then the food does not get transported to all the different parts of the body. So, this is something that we need to study. And apart from that, arueta lagibo that is called as Munn's hypothesis. Right. So, Mann's hypothesis, uh, mane, so, uh, xylem transports water, phloem transports uh, food, all correlate to nobody, you have to show it experimentally also. So, Mann's hypothesis, one, the one hypothesis that showed that phloem translocates food. So, this is the part that is left out. Uh, as of now, if this is over, we are going to discuss certain terms. Terms points
out of these potometer I say cobalt chloride test I say this is the only statement that you will remember if you are talking about a leaf, leaf or duta side take in a dorsal and ventral, duita side of take it, take a bos tomata take a bo. So duita somata, duita side of the somata take a duita side of a transpiration hobo, coat basic and say coat comke and say at a test that is called as cobalt. How is the test performed? Not needed. Right. Talking about wilting, a uh, wilting arutaman point like a label. Okay, we'll just write about wilting and wind up the class today. So what is wilting? Loss of turgidity that is called as wilting. Loss of turgidity ketia hobo jeta loss of water hobo, right? Wilting mane ke akhomi ata mijo tu korona lerili jai no. Adal plant or jeta pani nidi ati tele what will happen? It will droop down and that is what is called as wilting. Why does it droop down? Because it does not have enough water. If it does not have enough water, it will obviously lose its turgidity. So that's wilting. If you are talking about wilting, there are three types of wilting: incipient, temporary, and permanent. What is permanent wilting? We understand. If a plant achieves or reaches permanent wilting then obviously it cannot be reverted back right here gi na jai hi moriye thakibo thik ase as a name temporary is concerned i think we understand okoman deri karne droop hobo again if you apply water it will come back to its original form that's called as temporary talking about incipient what is incipient the first signs of wilting which you cannot see with your naked eye each and every plant during a period of time no but during the day at a particular time it wills. Jetia transpiration basi hobo, jetia road basi hobo, jetia bota basi hobo, transpiration basi hobo, transpiration basi hole, pani loss hobo, pani loss hole, tarjititi kumiza hobo. So, at certain point of time in the day, each and every plant will wilt, but these symptoms are not seen by our naked eye, and that is what is called as incipient. Right? Temporary ami dekhapa, permanent ro ami dekhapa. I think this is all for today. Rest of the things we will continue tomorrow. Okay? Thank you.